This is a show for grown-ups. And they say bad words. And they say bad words. Say final warning. Final warning. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Pod of Blunders. I'm your host, Nate Magnuski, and with me, as always, is Richard, very ill. I think I heard a stomach gurgle on the microphone just now. Sullivan. I'm sick, but I wouldn't miss this for the world. <laughs> also with joining us is CJ. Howdy. What's up? You might remember CJ from such things as being on here before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Richard, what are we doing today, dude? We are facing the Titan. That's right. Our last episode was an uh, interview with Nicolas Ramville, and I'm sorry if I'm fucking up your name, aka Gulix, who wrote this game. I kind of fell in love with it, and I just really wanted to get it out there. So Facing the Titan is a game where we're telling the story of, in this case, three companions that are banding together to go and save the world from some giant horrible beast, or being, or machine. We're going to be creating the Titan itself using some aspects of what's in the book. We're going to be creating a setting from scratch as well, because that's just kind of the people we are. And then we're going to go through what's sort of a formulaic game. There's five distinct phases with transition periods between them. There's a cool chart we have to fill out. I know how much you like charts. And at the end of it, I think we're going to have a pretty sweet story. I'm excited for this one. So before we started recording, we picked which Titan we're going to be facing. The way the book wants you to do it is to put a bunch of options out there, Everyone picks their least favorite and throws it out until you get down enough to only one Titan remaining that everyone picks as their favorite, or at least not their least favorite. Yeah, I said that kind of right. But what we did, we voted on which ones we wanted out of a reduced pool. So the Titan we chose today was Satria, which is also known as the Rusty Knight, the Creaking One, the Armor of the Eons, Prince of the Giants, and the Anachronic. And what this basically is, is a giant wandering robot that wanders around and tries to meet out his own sense of justice. So before we get into this, you know, the Titan came with his own locations set up, his own factions set up, and his own events from the history or what's happening now. But we're not going to use any of that. There are rules in the book to create your own setting and, and all that, and that's what we're going to do. So how it's going to start is one of us will stay a location. Now, it might be a location that we visit during the game, it might be a location that we can reference later on. This is just to kind of create a shared setting that we can all borrow from and a shared history of this robot and the world that it inhabits. So, CJ, I'm electing you to go first. Create a location for us. And it can be as large or small as you'd like. I think this should be a city that's very technologically advanced. Not like what we think of as sci-fi, but kind of like a fantasy sci-fi, arcane punk kind of city this is one of the epicenters of the world in terms of technology advancement do you want to give a name to the city i'm open for suggestions if anyone has them you know who has them the internet let's go to a random city name generator flavor town i like the attitude you bring into it but <laughs> fucking no <laughs> so all right <laughs> this fucking generator sucks some of these names are good like Sleaham and Knockburn, but then some of them are like Nose and Peta. <laughs> Those are just words. Uh, Osafia? Osafia. I like it. I hate it, but if I'm outvoted, I'll just have to go with it. Yes. <laughs> All right, Richard, you spoke up. You get to create the next location for us, bud. The nursing home. It's a convalescence home for like ex wizards and magic users. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I guess they're still practicing wizards and magic users. They just forget. Well, imagine like a wizard, right? <laughs> it's just, I love that sentence. <laughs> imagine like a wizard. All this powerful, crazy, like strong mind, the ability to warp reality to your whims. And then you start getting senile. <laughs> like there must be someone that has to like take care of them and their dotage to make sure they don't fuck up the world. So I have convalescence home for old wizards. <laughs> Excellent stuff. All right, I'm going to say that way up north is a port city that makes all their money from sort of like whaling, 
but these are like magical whales. So, you know, instead of getting your oil and your ambergris, you're getting like the raw arcane material from these animals up there. It's incredibly dangerous. These monsters are massive. That's what the industry that's fueling this empire is, is these magical whales from this port city way up north. Back to our favorite fantasy name generator, <laughs> Inglewood. <laughs> <laughs> sucks. So this is on the west coast. <laughs> yes. Uh, Arcta. That sounds great. A-R-K-T-A. -A. Alright, next up we have to come up with three factions. And it's going to go back to my good friend CJ for the first faction. Okay, factions. And this is distinct from the order that we're our characters are all part of, so don't worry about that. That'll be a fourth faction, essentially. There should be a faction that protects the world from giant monsters that are invading. I don't know the name of the faction. Monster Police. I mean, it's mm. not great. <laughs> it's not very Yo, good. Fuck you, you come up with <laughs> I wrote down Giant Monster Invasion Force, which at least sounds like an anime. GMIP, the GMIP. We don't want to use the word kaiju, because that's kind of like a thing already. Yeah. Behemoth, I'm thinking like large animal. Godzilla's. Um, you get your Godzilla's, you get your, <laughs> your King's, your King's Kong. Godzilla doors. <laughs> Godzilla doors. Like a matador for Godzilla's? <laughs> I don't hate it, honestly. Maybe like, or can we do behemoth doors? Like behemoth matadors? Oh, yeah. That, that sounds like, like a really big humidor. Well, you gotta, you gotta steam them to get them soft so you can fight them. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Monster police, I'm writing, just for... All right, Richard, do you have a faction idea? I have one if you want me to go while you Whoa. think. I'm just... This, Whoa. This is no... Respect the order. Look, except for these 200... No, 371 pages of rules for this book, there's no rules. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. There are very distinct rules that we're flying in the face of right now. <laughs> How about a, a group of scientists that are working hard to cure wizard dementia? Okay. And maybe they need that arcane material from the, the whales... Can I pivot that a little bit or throw something no. out? See if you. Oh well, that's fair. Go ahead though, <laughs> CJ. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm I'm listening. What if they are trying to study this giant robot that wanders around because they think that maybe translating the wizard's minds into a robot body using this technology is how you can fight quote unquote wizard dementia. What could possibly go wrong with that? <laughs> I'm not saying to put it in a giant body, but. Like, if you can get it at the peak of your mind, download that into a simulacrum. And then when you get old and stuff, they just kind of, you know, they just knock you off and put you in your robot body. And then you live in the robot? Yeah, not the giant robot, but like a smaller one. They're trying to understand the giant robot. Let me, let me offer this. And I don't know if this is exactly what you said, but what if, like, you have to have dementia? They want people in these robot bodies for whatever reason. And to get into that robot body, like, your mind has to be broken enough before you can be placed into the body. Because otherwise the human mind would just reject it. Yeah. Or maybe that's just the excuse they use, but they go after the people in the nursing home because they figure nobody cares about them anymore. All their families died. They left them in these crappy nursing homes. So they use that, those yeah. brains. So we're going to yeah. reveal some more about that stuff later on because there's different phases that we're going to like do different parts of the story. But keep that in mind because that's... I, I, I really do like what you're getting Yeah, there. that's fucking dope. It's sinister. <laughs> it really is. So I have Behemador, Monster Police, and whole army of Robocops need broken minds to be placed into a robot body. <laughs> those are two of our factions so far. I'm going to say there's a cult that follows behind the Titan as it wanders around. They're scavengers. Whatever it breaks, they figure that is their right to take. They take whatever survivors under their wings and keep them with them, but they're just like carrion birds that follow in this thing's wake. I like it. I'm going to call them carrion walkers. Sick. Our last step before we get into the game proper, because this isn't the game proper, my, my friends, is coming up with three events, either recent or ancient history. Uh, we're not going to talk about where the Titan came from yet, but you could always talk about like, oh yeah, I remember when the meteor hit this neighboring city and wiped it out or whatever. What about like a great wizard depression? Maybe they use this arcane energy as currency and whoever has the most becomes the most powerful wizard. And maybe for a time, the resource was totally tapped out. So there was just a long time where nobody had any magic and the world kind of went into like a depression. Things stopped running. Families that were powerful in wizardry 
lost standing. Social order crumbled, the industry broke down. It was just like a complete 180 of the established social order at the time. Right. And then maybe after the Depression, other families, you know, there was a struggle for power. How many years ago did this happen, do you think? 60 to 80. CJ, got anything? I do. Going back to your whaling idea, I think it'd be interesting if there was an event where they were hunting this huge magical whale and it fought back and caused an, an enormous like magical explosion somewhere out in the middle of the sea and maybe it destroyed all these ships that were chasing it. Now there's just a, a huge crater where it once was and that crater forms like a ring of islands around the, the explosion site. So I had all this time to think. I didn't make use of my time at all. I kind of want to piggyback off of Richard's Great Wizard Depression idea, if I may be so bold. Before this, we'll say 150 years ago, there was another massive war. And this war basically claimed so many lives that the people who were fighting didn't have enough people to, to field an army anymore. And that was the origin of these robot bodies that could house mines. So they would take the soldiers that were shell-shocked, ones that weren't fit for battle anymore due to their bodies being broken, and, well, you're still serving because you signed up for a 20-year term, so you're going back in. And so out of necessity to keep the war machine moving, that's why they created these bodies. So we'll call it the no good, very bad war of 150 years ago. Two. <laughs> Uh, now we have a little bit of history, now we have some players in the, in the world, we know a little bit more about it. And it's enough to, to get the game started. So any of these things can be referenced, you know, used again later in the game, or never discussed again if you don't want to. But there you have it. Our setting is established, and now we can go on with the game. So we're ready to start the first phase of this game, which is the companion phase. We're going to start by figuring out where our reunion site is. So one of us is going to dis uh, describe where we're meeting up. We're not describing ourselves yet, but we're just describing the location where we're going to meet. So like a meet cute. Yeah. No, we already know each other. So like a re-meet cute. So as I mentioned before, we're all part of the same company, our characters are. So before we create our characters, before we get into that, we need to name the company that we're in and talk a little bit about it. Who would like to roll for that? We've been going in order, so let's take CJ. <laughs> okay. So right, I roll two six-sided dice. Yep, and one is the first number, and the second one is, you might have guessed it, the second number. Okay. So my first number is a six, and my second number is a three. 36, because the lowest die indicates the tens, the highest die indicates the units. 36. We are the false company. So <laughs> whoever our characters are, none of you have received the order's blessing but you are going to face the Titan in spite of everything. <laughs> I kind of dig that. All right, so there's a little read-along text that one of us has to read. I'll do it because it's in front of me. We are the false company. Hunters, warriors, mages, scholars, nobles, barbarians. We have been brought together for one purpose, to put an end to the reign of the Titan. This gigantic being has caused ruins and desolation to our world for generations and generations. Progress and wonders are constantly at the mercy of the Titans' whims. Despite their differences, an agreement exists between the nations. The order of the Titans, us and others. We have each followed a mystical instruction, a physical training, a spiritual journey, or even all of these things. The decisive day is approaching. The one where our company will be gathered. The one where we will stand up to the Titan. We have prepared for this confrontation but we must not neglect our instincts in this battle. Let us get to know each other and rediscover each other after all these years. Tonight, let us share our experiences so that tomorrow, those who survive can tell the stories of those who fall. Okay, so now that that's done, we can move on to the companions phase, which is the first of the five phases of this game. And in this, we're gonna discover the place where we're gonna hang out and chill the place where we're meeting together again for the first time. All of our characters know each other already. We've been together a while ago. We separated to figure some stuff out, probably gather things to face the Titan. And now we're coming back together finally to do what we said we were going to do. Fuck this thing's day up. Describe the location we're going to meet. I like the location idea of the old person's home, hmm. full of mad elderly magic users. I mean, we're the false order, right? So we're, we don't have the order's blessing. Maybe the order is the people that are using 
these nursing home folks as their soul engine for their robots. Yeah, exactly. And so we're like this offshoot. Maybe, oh, what if we all shared like a Master Splinter type character that has started to go see now is here now, and we realize like we need to stop this giant titan, otherwise they're going to use his brain and that robot body to, to do it. Yeah. What if we are all just retired wizards? You know, we've seen all our friends, you know, over the last couple of years go missing, and then we figure out what's going on, and we say, no, we're going to make a pact. We might die. We're 785 years old. <laughs> However old wizards live, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> and, you know. I, I like that, because then we still... I think it's still believable that we could take down a Titan. <laughs> so we're retired wizards. We know like senility is coming for us, but we have a few years left to figure our stuff out and, and make it right and stop this Titan. So we are meeting in the rec center of the retirement home. So the purpose of our entrance is to set the groundwork for the companions. Each one of us has a companion. It'll be our character throughout the whole game until one of us dies right before the very end. Spoiler alert. Who would like to introduce their character first? I'll go for it. Okay, so roll your dice. If you get a higher one on the first plate, it'll be the noble tone. If you get a higher one on the second, it'll be the barbarian tone. Okay. So I got a four on the first and a one on the second. So is that the noble tone? Yes. Oh, before we proceed, on the sheet that you have, the motif sheet, there's four spaces. If you hear something that somebody says you think it's cool, Write it down in those spaces. And once okay. all four of those spaces are filled up, this this phase will end and we'll move on to the Titan phase. So would we just keep going around in circles and just adding more details until we fill up of those four boxes? Pretty much, yeah. Idea? So you'll introduce your character if you say something cool and which is like that's awesome. He'll write it down. My companion's gonna be named Sir Digglesby. He is an older wizard still alive from the war, living out the rest of his days here at this old folks home. Describe where you are right now, what he looks like. His hair's gray, but he's missing all the hair on top of his head. He still has, you know, like that male Hulk pattern Hogan baldness. Skullet. Yeah, like a <laughs> skullet. Oh yeah, I like that. I like the, the skullet where it, it's longer on the sides and nothing on, on top. I think uh, he he's pretty respected. People know of his accomplishments in the war, especially since he survived it without becoming a robot. Now he he he's in this garden with greenery everywhere, and he approaches this garden table and, and sits down and waits. I'm going to write down for a motif, admiring survivors. I feel like this world is very much like a might makes right world. Mm -hmm. Like, if you survive, that must mean you're a quality person. So right. I want to write down survival of the fittest. That might be something that comes up later on. So mine is a dark die high. It's 5-3. So you're sitting down at a garden table, Sir Digglesby. Right. You hear a loud crash, and you look over, and there's a man clad in furs kicking a door to the garden room open, and he's stomping through, and he's ripping his bag out of the orderly's hands, and he's like, I can carry my own goddamn bags, you boy. Step away from me. And I spit on his shoe. And I say, you old son of a bitch, and I look at you, and I walk over to you. <laughs> like, how the hell are you? And it's doing the Predator Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, <laughs> like, handshake. Exactly. <laughs> this guy's name is Doreg the Hand. Yeah, he's got one hand, and the other one is just a... It's not a hook so much as it is a mace. He sometimes pushes them out if he wants to, and he just looks filthy. He doesn't want to be touched. He doesn't like to be bothered. He's a fucking salty old cur. He sits down, throws his bags down, snaps at the orderly, and is like, beer, more of it, bring, now, go. The way I imagine this old folks' home is it's very organized, it's all very extravagant, elegant, and then you have Dorag here who's like very crass, crude, barbarianish player. And I think I'm actually fairly young, like, I wasn't alive for the last war, but I think my mind is addled from drink. <laughs> 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 So I'm old before my time. Well, but I'm not going to admit to that. They'll put people in there for rehab purposes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here with you old fucks. <laughs> You're like Nicholson in one floor of the cuckoo's nest. Exactly. I just wanted to break. The outside worked out too much for me, and I just wanted to have a little rest. So do we have to roll for our character? Whenever you roll the dice, you're rolling for one of two tones. 
if your light die is higher than your dark die, then you get the nobility tone for this phase. And if your dark is higher than your light, you get the barbarian tone. And that will help you color what kind of engines your character has or who okay. your character is. So I had the barbarian tone higher, so I had this big dirty drunk with one hand. So I rolled a one and a two. Uh, using my wizard name generator, <laughs> Ozaris. Sweet! I think Ozaris is in a floating magical wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I think he lost the use of his legs in the war. So he's probably been here the longest, because when he got back from the war, he had to go through like a hundred years of rehab. It just didn't take. <laughs> All right. So how does he enter this this conversation or this uh, party? And we all know each other from before. That's We have to know that. I think you order your beer from the orderly, which this is already like the greatest nursing home on earth, where you can just boss orderlies to give you beer. And I think you're about to chug it, and I use my magical wizard powers from off camera to change it to water. And I roll up and I'm like, you know where we're going, we need our minds to be sharp, and you can't poison your body with that crap anymore. We have to stay together and stay focused. And I think you're like, yeah, you fucking buzzkill. <laughs> uh, I put the glass down because I respect you. I want to think like, since I'm the younger one, I think I've trained under one of you two. And I'm like, not gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I look and I say, no matter what, if we win or we lose, the likelihood is that we're all going to die anyway. So you might as well enjoy a drink or two, all right? You can drink in Valhalla. It helps settle my hand. <laughs> <laughs> look at this hand, steady as a rock. But this is my wizard hand. <laughs> <laughs> so this, I just like reverse Jesus to you. I turned your wine into water. Yeah, you're the worst. <laughs> Write that down as a motif. Reverse Jesus. Reverse Jesus. Right, There's so got to be a motif around here somewhere. Respecting orders or respecting your superiors. Richard, how old did you say your character is? I think I said 750. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense for the world. I mean, wizards are old, right? Yeah, they, they have such long and... beards. Oh, by the way, my beard is very long. Thought it might be. <laughs> when I get cold, I wrap it around my neck like a scarf. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> so and I'm is wearing that like, like like star and moon pajamas, <laughs> but they have wizard sleeves. So looking back at our timeline, where it's like 150 years in the past and like 80 years in the past, 750 is like very ancient. So I I would say that you're probably the oldest of all of us. I I don't see Sir Digglesby being that old. I think he'd be maybe like 170 or something. That way he was old enough for the war and old enough to see the, what was 150 years ago? It was the really bad, no good war. Yeah, I think he was old enough for that. And then it was 80 years ago when the Great Magic Depression hit. Yeah, I had that when I was a teen. That was rough. <laughs> Here's a rabbit, so... Ma. <laughs> <laughs> the way the game is set up, we're supposed to be handing dice to each other, but we're playing this via Zoom. So... I'm just going to post questions to people, and they can post questions to me and to each other. Uh, Dory looks over at, at Sir Digglesby and says, So, it's been a while since we were together in the same room, and here we are. What have, uh, what have you been up to? Keeping out of trouble? Well, Doreg, I've just been biding my time for this very moment. He knows what's in store for him. Soon his mind is going to go. He knows that he can't do it alone. How do you think we met? What if my people were not magically inclined? They, they have different kind of rune magic, and we were on opposite sides of the battlefield. And my people got wiped out, but I was young enough, and you kind of, you know, took me under your wing as like a father figure, trained me in the way and all that, and now I, I've been like adopted into this culture. I respect you both, because I think you respect Grandpa Wizard, mm -hmm. and I respect you, so I'm just like, I'm paying my dues. You know, you told me you wanted me to be here. And I need to be here anyway, so here I am. Right. Maybe, maybe I want to meet Ozaris to learn his secrets to figure out how he's lived so long without his mind going. Um, because I think that's the the secret to, you know, not becoming a robot. So we were supposed to have known Ozaris from before. So you have met him a while ago, then we separated, and now we're back together again. Yeah. Maybe Ozaris learned something. Or found something within himself that that could help us. Ozaris, how are you so old? Why haven't why hasn't the ground opened up and swallowed you as you so richly deserve? 
Lots of pussy, man. That's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> I sold my soul when I was like a mere like 200 because I was in a pre pre bad super bad wizard war. World yep, yep. world wizard war. It was even worse. Yeah, the wizard world war. And I think I was dying on the battlefield. And I think I sold my soul to survive, to smite my enemies. But I didn't realize that that also made me immortal. Interesting. And I think I've been slowly feeding on other wizards and taking their essence and powers to stay alive. <laughs> so I'm like a wizard vampire. I think a motif out of that would be like power at a great cost for others. <laughs> Not so much for you. <laughs> You're making out like a bandit. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because I'm sucking all the souls at the nursing home, but they're like little souls. Like Bubba Hotep. Exactly like a Bubba Hotep. <laughs> Your classic Bubba Hotep Robocop story. God damn, that's a great movie. CJ, have you seen Bubba Hotep? I I do not know what a Bubba Hotep is. Stop the recording now. Go watch it. <laughs> yeah. Come back. We'll be watching. <laughs> so Bubba Hotep is a movie where you have someone who's allegedly really Elvis in a retirement home, and he meets a man... Who is allegedly JFK, but it's a black man. But they took JFK's brain and put it in this guy's body. Woe unto them! There's a mummy attacking their old folks' home, <laughs> and so and so black JFK and Elvis team up to stop the mummy. Is this like one of those cheesy movies that like set out to be stupid? Okay. The fucked up part is you think it would be. It's like really good. Oh, did I mention that Elvis is played by Bruce Campbell? When did this? It came out in two thousand two. Three, yeah. It's awesome. It's so. so anyway. <laughs> you're welcome, CJ. Anyway, so, where where did we leave off? I think Dorag takes his water glass now, and he just shatters it against the wall, and he's like, "Fuck this place! Why am I here with you geezers?" Except that you're, you know, incredibly powerful wizards. Like, what are we doing? Can we just go? Satria has to be coming closer. Like, we're all in a rush, and you're just sitting around here counting your teeth. No, I've been gathering my strength for the past couple weeks to really build up my wizard magic. You haven't noticed ambulances that have been in and out of here? No, I just got in the city last night. Oh, so you're not in the nursing home. I, I have to be placed in the nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> last time we were, we were together, and we'll talk about that in a later phase, we agreed to meet back up because we knew that if this world were to continue in any normal way, we had to destroy this thing. It couldn't be allowed to exist. Because all it does is wander and destroy. I don't know what its purpose was, why it was created, where the hell it came from. But all I know is that the technology that was developed from it has been a blight on this planet. If we can figure out how to stop the giant one, maybe we can get a better idea of how to stop all the other robots. Just end it. I think we were all like war buddies from the, the not-so-good war. You two are. I'm not. I'm a uh, baby. But I did fight you, and then we became yeah. friends. Is this the phase where we reveal anything or where we know anything about the titan That's or is this phase. Yeah. okay it's probably in the titan phase i'm guessing yeah you're you're right yeah and we need one more motif yep so just tell stories about yourselves pretty much so ask someone a question like hey before you came here what were you doing or like hey whatever happened to that girl you were seeing <laughs> what the fuck's your character's name richard ozaris ozaris how's your wife dead Oh, she died she died in childbirth <laughs> Why? oh my god you'll see like 650 <laughs> i'm the sammy because i think i'm gonna be your father later <laughs> oh yeah so the 700 and something year old is the one with the wife yeah ex wife oh well, it's not ex late wife <laughs> unless you divorce and then no, she, she died exactly on time so stupid. Well, I'm not ready to motif out of that. I'm trying to fucking do something for you. Well, I'm giving yeah. all this hay, spin it into gold. When you're as old as I am, every you watch everybody you love die at a young age. It kind of gets to you after a while. I kind of look at you and I'm like, well, in the world we live in, everyone watches everyone die. This is kind of why we're here. This is a fucking hellhole. What's, what do you have to look forward to in this place? You're rich and powerful. The most rich and powerful in the world. And, then your brain goes because it's soaked in magic juice from those fucking whale things. Bingo on Tuesdays. Jello that, every morning. That's exactly it. That's all. Like that's. If you do everything right in life and achieve the height of your power, your ultimate reward is is to languish until you're turned into a soldier, a mindless automaton. 
that's why we're fucking here. Like, oh, oh I'm so sad. Everyone died. In my, yeah, everyone died in all of our fucking lives. My whole people got wiped out by this asshole. And I point to <laughs> Sid to me. But hey, you know, we have the ability, at least for a few years yet, maybe even less time for you, you ancient, ancient man. We got to do something with that time. Well, I think, too, the other reason I'm in the nursing home is... The poon. <laughs> he fucking slays. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he's I got seven hundred years of experience behind him. Yeah, I think magic in general is kind of drying up, so there's not as many uh, magic users to eat. Can we just wait it out then? Oh no, they can use non-magic people for the robots, right? Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe it's fueled by like the power of your soul, or I don't know, your force of will, or something. Oh, that makes sense. Force of will is kind of cool, kind of like a Green Lantern idea. Yeah. So is there is there any like hope in this world is that would that be a motif of like hope despite extreme devastation or maybe like the motif would be the opposite of that where there is no hope the death of magic so i mean the motif could be like the smallest spark of hope a new hope you got one of the robo hops robo <laughs> robo ho tip star wars it's a one-legged <laughs> robo cop yeah. we awaken the force I kind of like the idea of like this being a complete bleak, horrible existence for everyone, but there's like a little sliver of something out there. Maybe we could get, maybe we could make this right. And that's why we're here. Like we're probably gonna fucking die to this robot. We know it's ultimately probably futile. But maybe we could put an end to it. Yeah, it's uh, optimistic. I'm gonna write down for a motif: optimism soaked in bleak realism. <laughs> so now we're gonna be leaving our characters behind for this next phase. We're going to the Titan phase now. With the Titan phase, we're kind of stepping back and becoming narrators in a bigger picture, talking about the Titan. This is where we're going to learn about the Titan. Remember uh, the Titan. Remember it. Clash uh, with it. Attack on it. Uh, other stuff with Titan in it. <laughs> Titan A. <laughs> Teen Titans. Uh, we're going to Titan Ick. <laughs> <laughs> I think we zoom out from this depressing fucking meeting and far in the distance we hear like this thrumming it's rhythmic a grinding of metal and over the hill steps this giant metal knight completely rusted through like you can see light coming through it it looks like it's moving impossibly slow and every hole in its armor all the rusty worn through bits are shining with this like sunlight that it hurts to look at and out of the thing's helmet it looks down constantly judging everything before it its eyes burn with that same light and it feels like hatred whatever this thing is that's been wandering the world and why ever it was created no one is quite sure but one thing is sure is that it hates everything that it sees and we see it like stomping a village kicking through a river its foot takes up uh, like it could stop an entire building flat think of your typical godzillas you know mm -hmm. or like a money python foot like a like Monty Python foot. Yeah, it goes, and it stops. It's, but that's what we're seeing now. As we move on to this phase, we have new tones we can get. The Colossal Tone, if it's a positive die, or the Titan Tone. And the Titan has its own tones, and I'll read you those in a bit. I have a question. Are the yeah. tones for each phase always the same? No. So the first phase of tones were Noble and Barbarian. This mm -hmm. one is Colossal and Titan. We're going to be describing this Titan through a series of vignettes. So this can either be from nowish or it can be from way back in the day. And we're going to be just exploring what it does. And if someone is explaining something about the Titan through a past vignette, one of the other people can ask them a question about it. And all we're doing now is kind of fleshing out this Titan, showing its power, showing its threat. We really want to make this thing come alive in this phrase. And with the motifs, one of the motifs has to reference a past motif. A three and a six. You get to choose one of the Titan's tones. So, Satria has several tones that are just his. And they are grating, because of his metallic nature, unstable, and night, K-N-I-G-H-T. So you'll use one of those tones in your vignette to help color what, what happens. Probably night, because I'm thinking I know this Titan, Satria, from the war I was killed in. Or would have been killed in. So I think he's that old. And I think I actually may have been killed by this Titan. 
And that's why I have such like a death boner for it. Was he fighting on someone's side back then? Like, did someone create him as like a war machine? What side were you on? What side was the Titan on? So did one wizard create this fucking thing? <laughs> Maybe there was like one very powerful wizard who wanted to create order for the world. And this is how they saw that they could create that order. Maybe they used that magic that we're currently using to put people into robot bodies to put himself into this. So he feels like this very strong sense of justice. And he goes around and wails on people. And maybe there are some people who are for that. And then there are other people who are like, no, we shouldn't do this. This is pretty extreme. I don't know. What, what if it's like an AI? It's like an Ultron situation? So mm. it was created to fight, but because it has such a singular mindset, it got out of hand, which is why they stopped doing AI robots, and now they've gone for using human minds. I love both of those. Can I add something to it then? We have to play with the timeline a little bit, but what if this thing is why magic started running out? <laughs> like, it took so much magic to make this thing. It created, like, a permanent magic dent. So wherever this thing wanders, magic suffers. It doesn't work right around it because it's just sucking all the magic in and that's how it fuels itself i like it because i also suck magic so it's like a yeah you suck magic a... i'm gonna write motif sucking magic <laughs> is that an echo of power at great cost i think so yeah at a great cost of others yeah so let's make it more of a story then so 150 so odd years ago right there, there was a big wizard battle you are on one side with the, like the United Wizard Front, or whatever you want to call it, against this evil giant wizard Satria, who is extremely powerful, well, the most no, powerful mage in history. It's it's longer ago than that because there was the war that me and CJ fought in. This was like the Civil War, and then when right. me and CJ fought in was like Korea. Like that's kind of the the distance. So CJ didn't fight in this war. So this was like 250 years ago, what right? You said before, but I think so. he might have also been in that war too. He's not that old. I thought he so, was. I, I was in like um no, not the CJ, more either. recent war. Oh, not Satria. CJ, Satria. Oh, yeah, Satria, okay. yeah. I got you, I got you. I think he was rolling, like he busted him out of retirement. Oh, he never sorry. stopped, and that's why he's so... Like, when I knew him, he looked sweet. Like, <laughs> right. no, no rust, just chrome-plated, shiny, had all of his parts fresh out of the, the, the packaging. Could he talk back then? He's just a mindless killing machine. So the wizard didn't like put his soul into this thing, or didn't put his mind into it. This is just, like you said, an AI. Yeah. So how did the wizard die that created him? Shot himself in a bunker. <laughs> in oh. a bunker. No, no. <laughs> what, if, what if he died um, because he created this thing and it went out of control and killed him? Yeah, kind of like, like a Frankenstein monster kind of thing. He was too ambitious and it... it it costs his life. I like the idea of giving it a directive like the wizard was so completely confident in his own righteousness and he like gave the monster the like you need to go stomp out evil wherever you see it. And it's like and okay, he was smash. the evil that he saw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he just now he just wanders around stomping everything because he perceives everything as evil. And as he's right. dying, he's like, Maybe I should have been more specific. <laughs> <laughs> and the other guys. That's cool. So now we have a lot more information on the site than we had like a hot second ago. Anyone have an idea for the next vignette? Could I roll for it and then come mm -hmm. up with it? Absolutely. So I got a two and a five. Okay, so again, one of the Titan words. Grading, knight, and unstable. I'll go with grading. I think back in the war, maybe the wizards did win, and they really damaged this knight. For a long time, uh, Satria was broken, and couldn't do anything until one day an event somehow revived it and now this damaged knight that was all rusted over was revived and started wreaking havoc upon the world everywhere it goes you can hear like the churning of its gears and everything from miles away as this thing stomps around and destroys everything in its path so that that grating yeah sound is not just due to the rust it's also d due to the damage that it sustained before but maybe it like can regenerate itself a little bit it's resilient like that maybe it can absorb life forces and i think just like me 
the more quality and number of life sources, the better it looks. But because it's just bottom feeding, that's why it looks all rusty and shitty. What if that's why it's making its way to the city now? Because it knows that's where the biggest concentration of wizards is. And like they've kept it at bay long enough, and now it's it knows that it's hungry now and it's going to eat. What if, since that day, the world has been so full of war that no one has been able to come together enough to defeat this thing? So mm -hmm. everything's just so disorganized since then. Whereas before it was just, there's only two sides to this, where you were for it or against it. Now it's just, there's so many different factions and everyone only cares about themselves that no one can come together to beat it. I like that as a motif, kind of like a splintered world, lack of unity. like Because of the depression. Or like together we conquer, divided we fall or something. Yeah, depression scared everyone so bad. Now it's like a... Everyone has that scarcity mindset. The right, scarcity nobody shares mindset. anything. Yeah. They hoard their magic and bury it underground. And right, like hey, I got mine. You didn't get yours. That sucks for you. All right, so I will roll, and I got the colossal theme. And what are the colossal words? Just the word colossal. I don't ah. get to choose words. Yeah, so something that shows how big this fucker is. I think that there was a time. People tell the story anyway, of when he broke down, that first time. And he was still for a hundred years. His shadow stretched over this farmland that was some of the most fertile in the world. And in that hundred years, nothing grew in that shadow. So it stretched for so long and so wide. And because of the way the sun moved around him, it was like his giant perimeter all around him that just everything was dead. And you can still go there now and still nothing grows in that spot. And it's like this big blight, almost like a crop circle, but everything is fucking dead. Animals avoid it. People don't live there anymore. It's a cursed place. I like it. There's some symbolism there. If you want to make a motif out of it, we can move this game along. War has scars that stretch way beyond the present day. So I have War Leaves Huge Long-Lasting Scars. Tell us a story about this, EJ. Oh, no, Richard, right? Could have been. Tell the first one? Yeah. Yeah, Richard was the first. So roll again. Ah. You get out of it this time. A four and a five. We'll go with Unsteady. I think as, as he travels across the country... More and more pieces like start falling off, gears and screws, and I think he's unsteady on his feet. I think he just trips and like crushes an entire city in one fall. So what what the... city did he fall on? Well, I'm glad you asked, CJ. <laughs> oh, he fell in Arcta. Arcta. If you don't remember, Nate, that was what you created, the magical whaling town port city way up north. Ah, mm -hmm. is that why magic was really scarce for a while? Well, yeah, because he crushed all the boats, so they couldn't go out and harvest any magic arcana on account of no boats. And <laughs> on account of no boats, and that's what. <laughs> and no, that's because he, right? he rose from he rose from the ocean like a Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Next one of you fuckers is this Godzilla. <laughs> So he caused a Great Depression 80 years ago when he crushed the whaling city. I liked it more that it was a fallout from war, but he's a product of war, so it still works. Yeah. What if... So we were saying he was falling apart, but he absorbs magic. What if he, when he crushed this place... Well, he was drawn to it because of the magic there. Mm -hmm. When he crushed it, that's what restored him to the point where he's much better now than he was then. What if he had been saying. floating in the ocean and he washed up ashore? Oh, yeah. Like, he was defeated. People thought he was gone because he was up, like pushed out to sea. And then he just like woke up and then walked out of the water. <laughs> yeah, floated ashore, idiot. crushing the the docks. Yeah, sucked up some of the magic. Was like, ooh. Hmm. Is is he getting sentient now? Like, is he realizing that magic restores him? Like, is he gaining a mind? Because <laughs> that's fucking horrifying too. <laughs> it's a hive mind, and I think because I also collect souls, that somehow we're connected. Like, we feel each other's vibrations. So that's why I'm warning you guys that he's coming. I mean, magic as fuel could still be a motif, or Big wanton level. destruction, or or entropy. He's I, breaking I, down. I think just toddler levels of destruction, like they don't even think about it. <laughs> Baby giraffe legs. So earlier we were talking about how he was just out there to stomp out evil, but in this phase of his life when he was breaking down, it was just by accident a lot of times. <laughs> like mm -hmm. he still wanted very much to crush evil, but he's just so clumsy. Or he was so damaged from the war or something that he, he literally couldn't do it. Right. I got it. Okay. War machine keeps on turning. Hmm. 
I'm writing it down. You are in charge of this next vignette. All right. So it's going to bring us to the world phase. So this is the time of separation. It's a vignette from the companion's past. You're talking about showing the last moment we were all together before we went our separate ways. So like right now, where we are in the garden, is the first time we've been together in X number of years or whatever. And what you're going to talk about is the last time we were together before this, however long ago that was, and what we were doing, why we split up, and all that fun stuff. I think we were at a ticker tape parade to celebrate the ending of the war, but you wouldn't have been there because... Right. I mean, there could be another war. <laughs> have you ever fought in a war? Yeah. So you are yeah. like military... I'm like an Wizardly. occupying police person. Like, oh, this little community up in the hills won't pay taxes. And I go there and I stomp them out and take their money and give it back to the crown. Okay. I think we were at your graduation from Wizard Cadet School. Mm. I think at the end of every class, the prior class comes in, you know, as part of like a metal pinning ceremony. And maybe like we pulled you aside and like, you know, fighting wars isn't the way. And you're like, fuck you all, man. So it's been like 30 years since we were all together. And so I'm curious. Now, like, so what did you like? You reach out to us via letter and be like, hey, you only have a little bit of time left. So no, I think I orchestrated a series of events in your life because I'm a wizard and sneaky like that to get mm -hmm. you sent to this particular nursing home where I was at. <laughs> like I got the you busted sure. for like like wizard drugs and then you had to go to like prison. You're like, no, I'll go to rehab. <laughs> and this place was like, we'll take him. I was have an opening. Prison, and I was wizard pulling, rehab. Yeah, and I was pulling the strings the whole time. A lot of people have died here, so we have the space now to take somebody on. It's kind of weird. How do you think Sir Digglesby fits into this? Do you think Doreg asked Sir Digglesby to to come with him for that most recent meeting where we were just in the garden? Well, how did you end up in the nursing home? I think age is getting to Sir Digglesby. I think he's like on the brink of losing his mind. What if you weren't though? Ah. What if, because again, I'm mischievous. Mm -hmm. I've been like slowly drugging you or like moving stuff around in your apartment when you weren't looking so you think you're going crazy you're like my keys were just here man <laughs> don't gaslight him Richard you're not your character is not senile you're just there to prey on the, the weak and take their souls right I think CJ Sir Digglesby is also not senile but he wants to be next to you because he knows he feels something is coming and he knows like hmm <laughs> and preparation has to begin and that's why he chose to pretend to be senile and go to this nursing home and then like you orchestrated that. my life to be like a fucking drugged out weirdo and I get kicked out of the, the force or whatever and that's how I ended up here because of my drug habits and I'm like okay the pieces are all together now we can start fighting this fucker I like that I'm I just don't want to guess like CJ just okay that's fine <laughs> you, you just do it anyway just yeah, I didn't have to do this, but I fucking wanted to. It's like, man, you could have just called me <laughs> on your wizard phone. You broke into my house? <laughs> Did you kill my cat? Yeah, that was an accident. <laughs> and that's all we've got for you for this week, but make sure you come back next week to hear the exciting conclusion of Facing the Titan. If you want to grab a copy of this game yourself, follow the link in the show notes to Gulix's itch.io page and get a copy of Facing the Titan and some of his other stuff too. I mean, he's just a great designer and it's always nice to support the deserving folks out there in the world. If you want to support the Pot of Blunders, we are actively trying to grow our audience. From what I understand, the best way you can support that is to go on to your podcatcher of choice and rate our podcast five stars, leave a comment. And if you do, I'm happy to read your comment out loud on the air, as long as it's not too fucked up. Beyond that, just telling friends and family and really anyone who wants to listen that you enjoy listening to us, what kind of folks we are and uh, how you know where to find us. That is a huge help to us, and I cannot overstate the value of it. Word of mouth is how anything spreads in this hobby, and we need you to help us out. Honestly, we would love it if you could tell your friends where to find us. And most importantly, how handsome we are, uh, how, how funny, engaging, and charming, how down-to-earth, humble, and yet uh, how much we're like provocateurs, and we take no prisoners, and we have like a... We got to hell with you attitude, but we're also like sensitive and sweet, you know, like the usual stuff you tell people about your favorite podcast. Beyond that, we're always happy to take on more patrons 
patreon.com slash pot of blunders. That helps us pay the cost of the website. That helps us afford the games that we play. And it lets us know that what we're doing is working out. So again, patreon.com slash pot of blunders. You can get copies of any games that I make. I think there's two up there right now, and there's two more that I'm working on. You get access to our Jumping the Street Shocks podcast. We're on episode 18 now, and 19 will be coming out next week. So that's, I mean, for a dollar, five, or ten a month, you can get access to that. Exclusive access to our Discord. And uh, just the warm and fuzzy feeling that you've done a good job. So if you can't do any of that at all, I understand. And thank you for listening. We love you, we appreciate you, and we will see you next week. For the Pot of Blunders, I've been Nate Magnuski, and as always, may all your Ds be 12s.